Today on the Urco Bender 65, Urco Bender 76 machine, we're going to show you how to build a tool set file on the PDAC control, the machine operating system. So we're going to be back and forth between the screen here and the machine head, showing you exactly what values to enter on the tool set file. It's a very graphic interface, so the program tells you what it wants to see. So we're going to start by going to program. We're going to go to tool set file and new. You can uh, name the tool set file anything you want. It's up to you. Name it, call it whatever you want. For this purpose of this, I'm going to call it demo. Enter. It's going to pop up a new tool set file. And you have to populate the yellow fields. So we're just going to highlight the yellow fields. It'll be a very graphic interface, what I want you to see. I want you to input, double click. In this case, bend groove diameter. What size material are we going to use? For this demo, we're going to use inch and quarter pipe. So I'm going to put in 1.66. That's the outside diameter of inch and quarter pipe. Next line on the tool set is Y axis bend die interference. Double click there. And graphically, it's telling you how close can you get the carriage to that bend die without having any interference mechanical issues. So we're going to go over to the head of the machine and look and see what's going to uh, be a, a hindrance for us. Remember that the zero mark is here. Zero of the spindle, center of the spindle, is also the tangent line of the former. So the question now is, how close can we bring the carriage into this area before we hit the bend die? Notice we have the wiper die and wiper bracket in position here as well. All the tooling has been mounted, so we're ready to get that interference zone. So we're going to measure from the tangent line to the back of this wiper bracket about 17 inches. That means I can bring that carriage into this point before I have any mechanical interference zones. So I'm going to come back to my control and I'm going to put 17 here. That's the, type, the closest I can bring the carriage to that bend die without having any mechanical issues. This 17 is also the load and unload point of the automatic cycle. Okay. Y-axis pressure die interference is next line. We're going to double click that. Now it wants to know how close we can bring the carriage to the pressure die without having any mechanical issues. We're going to go back into the head of the machine again and look at that. Again, zero on the former. That's our tangent. That's what we're going to measure from and mechanically be to the back of the pressure die mount here. So what is that distance? So we're going to measure from zero to the back of that pressure die We've got about 24 inches. So we're going to, that's the value we're going to use for this setting on our tool set file to be 24 inches. So we're going to come back to our control, 24, enter, and we're just going to save that. Collet length is next on our tool set. Some customers use a collet stop back gauge, some do not. It's up to you if you have a back gauge or a collet stop in the machine currently. This depth is going to be determined by the collet closed and measure from the face of the nose to the collet stop if it's in there. That's going to be the value you're going to input here. Most customers who are running a 6 meter or 20 foot machine do not have a collet stop, so they have to tell the machine how much they're going to put in the collet each time they load material and respect that so we can do recaptures on longer lengths of material. So this machine today we're going to run without a collet stop so I'm going to put two inches in this collet depth here. Meaning I'm going to load my material to two inches of depth every time. I'm going to mark my material, load to the face of the collet for two inches of depth. And you must respect that when you load the material so the machine knows how to calculate lengths. Clamping system KST, this is always a no on the Urco Bender 6576. We do not use a KST style clamp, we use a finger style clamp on this machine. X1 bending axis position. <clears throat> on larger machines that also use this control, we have the capability to shift the head in or out to allow for easier loading and unloading of larger materials. On the Urkel 65, Urkel 76, we do not use that option. So we can leave it blank, but for simulation files, I always make it the radius of my tool. So my former here is three inches. So I'm gonna put three inch 
here for my X1 low position. Also, I'm going to put 3 inches here for my loading position, 3.0. Save that. Next line on our tool set, X2 pressure die position in. We have all the tooling mounted on the machine, so we're going to have to set the pressure die in position, the axes on the machine, uh, for an in value and an out value. So we're going to turn the pumps on. I'm going to load a piece of material on the head, just a scrap drop in, and set the X2 value. So right now I'm going to turn the pumps on. I'm going to take a piece of uh, drop or scrap here, load it on the machine, over the mandrel. I'm going to save this by on my tool set. We're going to come back to it. I'm going to go to my manual screen and actuate my clamp arm first. Close my clamps. Then I'm going to highlight X2 and bring my X2 pressure die in. In case this is going uh, too quickly for you, there is a separate video on setting only the X2 pressure die, okay? That's also on our uh, YouTube channel. So now we're going to bring X2 pressure die in. I'm going to take my handheld, push plus, jog the axes in until I have pressure on the material. I'm up against the material. I'm going to look at my value here on my screen, 0 0.70. That's going to be my pressure die in position. So I'm going to escape here for a minute. Go back to my tool set. That's my demo die. Edit. X2 pressure die in. 0. Oops, here. 0 0.7016. Save. Now I have to have the pressure die out position. That's my next line. Okay. I want my in and out to be about half inch or three quarter inch difference. So I can do that mathematically through numerically through this by putting like 1.2 here, 1.3. And that's about 600 thousandths difference. I'm going to save that. Y2 axis booster stroke. The Y2 axis is the cylinder here that's traveling with the bending head as we're bending and again we have a separate video on our YouTube channel we're saying just the Y2 axis 3 zero on an axis, 7 axis so we want the Y2 axis to travel with us during the bend so this is actually the arc length of the bend so you can calculate the arc length you have about 7.5 inches, 8 inches of travel on that axis so I like to set this a long travel so I don't have to do a lot of recaptures during the bend. Now recapture is when the y-axis travels to a fixed distance. If it reaches the limit, it's going to stay clamped, release the pressure die, shuttle the pressure die, come back in and follow again until another recapture cycle. I like to have one fluid motion, so I'm going to leave this value long. I, since I have seven and a half inches of travel on the axis, I'm going to leave this like seven inches. I'm going to put like seven inches here on the back booster stroke, Y2 booster stroke. I'm going to save that. The next value is our Y3 manual position in. Again, we have a separate video on the YouTube channel for setting Y3 manual position, but I'll do it again here. So I'm going to just save this real quick and take that piece out we have in the machine right now. So I'm going to save, escape, escape. I'm going to go back to my manual page and open up my X2. Open up my clamp. Remove that piece of material from the machine. And we're going to set our mandrel depth. So we're going to go back to our tool set file on our screen. So I'm going to go back here to my Y3 axis. 
Now remember on our program, we're at mandrel depth, demo die, Y3 mandrel in. So we have to set a mandrel position when the forward is, uh, mandrel is forward, close to our tangent point. I'm going to save this, go back to my manual screen, select my Y3 axes, Go back to the machine so we can show you the mandrel position. Now, the mandrel position Y3 must be set always with the mandrel cylinder fully extended forward. I take my handheld control, push plus, move my cylinder all the way forward. The cylinder is maxed out full forward. And I'm gonna look at my mandrel position. My shank, body of the mandrel, should be about even with the tangent line of the former even to slightly ahead. So an eighth of an inch forward or a sixteenth back is about ideal position. With the mandrel shank even, that's a good neutral starting point. From that point, you can look at the bends you're producing and adjust the mandrel depth in or out as you need to. So with the cylinder forward now, we're gonna look at the value of our manual screen, our encoder value. And this value, with mechanically, if its body is good, will become our Y3 mandrel in position. If we need to adjust the position of the mandrel, we can go to the tailstock, two nuts on the back of the mandrel cylinder, mechanically loosen those nuts and move the whole cylinder draw bar forward or back to get that mandrel body at tangent with the former. Okay, in this case, our position is good. We're gonna look at our value for Y3, mandrel full extended forward on the cylinder. We're going to go back to our program, our tool set, demo, edit, Y3 manual position in. This is going to be zero. Our manual screen reads zero, fully extended. This is going to be our in position. Our next line is manual position out. We have to have an out position for the Y3 mandrel when the spheres are clear of the tangent. So we're going to save this. Go back to our manual, our manual screen. Y3, handheld control, minus, retract that mandrel until the spheres are clear or to the left of the tangent line. So the spheres will not be in the bend when we're moving the material between bends. They're clear of the tangent, they're clear of the bend. So again, we're gonna go back to our screen look at our value now when we're retracted the spheres are clear of the tangent minus 2.81 that's going to become our manual position out so edit manual out minus 2.81 enter save that our mandrel pre-retract angle is our next line of our tool set we have the ability to extract the mandrel prior to the end of the bend so it doesn't leave a large hump at the end of the bend. Typically we do this at two or three degrees prior to the end of the bend. So I'm going to set this at three degrees. This is a degree setting. So mandrel pre-retract angle is at three. What that means is if we have a 90 degree angle program, the machine is going to tell the rear cylinder, the mandrel cylinder, to retract that mandrel at 87 degrees. 90 minus R3. Okay. Next line of our tool set. Following mode, Y1. Double click that, it's going to show you. Here is a percentage value of the carriage travel. Y1 is our linear carriage. We always want that carriage traveling with us during the bend cycle. So this is always a value of 100%. A value of zero here, the carriage will not follow with us during the bend and will actually open the collet in between bends. We don't want that. We want that carriage constantly traveling with us, value of 100%. Next line is pressure on pressure die. This is a yes or no answer. Let me explain both options here. A no answer here means that we're going to bring the pressure die, our X2 pressure die, into position, our in value which we set earlier in the tool set file, it's going to come to that value and stop. 
also when it retracts, it's going to go to our out value. So it's going to go between those two values and just stop there. That's on a no value. A value of yes means that it's going to actually sense the load it's up against the resistance, and especially for heavier wall materials. That pressure line is going to be forced out. The elasticity of the material is going to push against it and give it some resistance. So it may not be able to maintain that position we have set for our end value. So we're going to put the change that to yes. We're going to deal with heavy wall material, even on some thinner wall materials if we turn the pressure down. So on pressure die in, or pressure die on pressure die, no, it just goes between our values we have set. Yes means it's going to exert more pressure, sense of load, and try and maintain position. So for what we're doing today, we're going to leave it at no. I'll leave it right there. Plant pressure. This is just a note for the operator. It does not set the clamp pressure. Just a note for the operator to say, hey, when I set my clamps up earlier on my tool set, I had 110 bar. So when I use this tool set again, I'm going to check my clamp pressure and set my die, my clamp die at 110. Pressure die pressure, again, this is just a note field. It does not set the value. So it just allows the operator to say, hey, my pressure line is set at 50 or 60 bar, whatever I read earlier. That's what I'm set at here. Crucial if you're using the pressure on pressure to I, yes value, is to always regulate this pressure and be note of that pressure so you don't exert too much pressure on thinner wall tube, especially and crush it on the manual. Okay? KST no arm, yes. This setting on the tool set. You can see the differences. We use a bending arm on our Urco 65, Urco 76. On larger machines that use the same software, it's a KST a clamping system, clamshell system. So a setting of yes has to be entered here. So we're going to hit one, enter, and save that. So we're using a setting of yes. Uh, the rest of the tool set is really not used on the Urco 65, Urco 76. We don't have any roll system. We don't have this. So we can just end our tool set entries here. The rest of the values are not uh, pertinent to the Urco 65, 76 machine. So we're going to save. And that's going to be the complete entering values of our tool set.